A small, well-used tube is taken from its casing to be slid through the phonograph. This guy's name was Cal Stewart, and he used to just get on and talk. A diamond pin hooks onto the blue material, casting back and forth as sound begins to play. I've been down to New York, I have. This device, invented back in 1877 by Thomas Edison, still produces a quality recording. Peter Gagan considers himself a historical collector, finding enjoyment in preserving these artifacts and learning from their stories. His collection of unique forgotten items is extensive. He even has a 1960s gas-powered pogo stick. I always wanted one when I was, was a young man, or younger, you know, back in the 60s. They were advertised in Mechanics Illustrated. I couldn't afford one at the time, but later on I met the builder, and he was in the Antique Motorcycle Club, so he put one together for me, and uh, I have it. They stopped selling them because there were some liability issues. He's hopping on a hop rod. The most prized items of his classic collection, though, are Peter's motorcycles and cars. Throughout his lifetime, Peter has owned 144 motorbikes and 44 cars. His first bike was a 1911 Indian that he got at 16. I have one modern bike. I've got the 1974 BMW. That's just 40 years old. But everything else I own was built before World War II, and more than half of them were built before World War I. It's all about history. So what bikes do you have here? We've got four. These are my early ones. The earliest one is the steam bicycle over there. It was built in 1896. Steam never really caught on with motorcycles it's because of the amount of fuel, etc. you had to carry. So we get into gasoline-powered machines. The Zenith Gradual was built in Hampton Court, England. The man that owned the company was named Freddie Barnes. And Freddie Barnes was quite a character because when he first came out with a motorcycle in 1904 and his slogan was, built of finest quality throughout we employ no female labor. So <laughs> this, once the suffragettes started marching around England, <laughs> it didn't go over very well. Yeah. But he was lucky because he, he developed this amazing variable speed transmission. Mm -hmm. It's called a graduate gear. As much as Pete loves to retell the tales of these machines' pasts, he likes to restore them and get them back onto the open road. For most of these bikes, these roads are a little more maintained and require faster speeds than back when they were built, but they handle the terrain with ease. Matter of fact, they kind of spoil you because I like the mechanical stuff, and the motorcycles are almost all mechanical. A lot of things to do, you know, you got some of them you have, uh, like those early ones, there's a lot of levers and controls and you don't have on modern vehicles. Pete says if you start off with a bunch of rusty parts and by the end of it, your classic isn't worth 40 grand, you're wasting your time and should just buy one. What can be a very expensive hobby, Pete has been able to come out ahead. He says by treating his collection much like stocks in a market, knowing when to hold on and to let go of certain items, he's managed to make the hobby pay for itself. But you also let your enthusiasm work at it too. You know, I don't buy stuff I'm not interested in. It's clear from the endless stories Pete has to tell and his three-car garage filled with antique vehicles that Pete has quite a passion that some would argue is an obsession with the hobby. He says he probably has more bikes than he needs, but each one of his treasures has a unique story and thrill to it that is worth holding on to. In Parksville, I'm Rayanne LaPlante.